Welcome to the channel rather dubiously called Rufio. I'm the best Yugi tuber in my street, a very average player who uses this platform to trick you into thinking I'm good at and capable of playing Yu-Gi-Oh on any kind of level at all. Before we get started, why don't you hit subscribe for me, even if it's not because you secretly enjoy bad content, but because you pity me. I need every bit of help I can get. Hi guys, it's Joe here from Rufio. Welcome back to the channel if uh, this isn't your first time here and if it is go ahead and hit subscribe Let's get that awkward part out of the way where we beg for your subscription so that you can see our future content So today I'm going to be looking at Burning Abyss one of my absolute favorite archetypes uh, Alongside a handful of others which you'll get to know if you are subscribed to the channel based on the content that I release on a Pretty regular basis and today I wanted to go over an introduction to Burning Abyss now, so this isn't going to be super in detail or anything like that, but hopefully it'll get you to grips with, uh, if you're looking to say maybe learn the archetype or get a bit more information about it so that you can learn how to play against it. Maybe you've got that friend at locals that you want to beat that you keep losing to, or maybe you just want to pick up the deck because it is fun and pretty budget friendly most of the time. Um, and it's also an incredibly diverse deck. So format after format, there's usually a way to play it in a different style. And we're going to cover all of that in this video. Hopefully it is going to be excellent and uh, useful for you so that you can use that going forward yourself and uh, yeah we'll get stuck in shall we so we'll do a quick introduction so you've got some idea of what the deck is about how it plays and all that kind of stuff so burning abyss debuted as a tcg exclusive alongside the slightly less impressive ua in duelist alliance back in 2014 with support following across various releases since then right up until more recently with the likes of Cherubini. The archetype is based on Inferno, the first part of Dante Alighieri, if I pronounced that correctly, his 14th century epic poem, The Divine Comedy. And most people who are familiar with the deck will normally have had a dabble into the backstory of how this came about and all that kind of jazz. The main Burn in Abyss monsters are based on the Malbronk, which are a group of demons from the poem and are named at least mostly as a slight variation to the original names from the poem itself. This is of course excludes Dante, Beatrice and Vi Virgil. Burn in Abyss has a cult following in the game, quite often joked about its inability to be killed completely. The deck has seen format after format of experimentation and seen success on different levels ever since its release from the early days to as recent as 2018 and 2019. Seeing tops at major events such as YCS is piloted by the likes of Andre Torres, Dinka Boy, Thomas Rose and Joshua Oosters, as well as countless nationals and regional level events in between. So what is it that makes Burning Abyss so popular and how is it played? Well, Burning Abyss is quite diverse in how it's been played over time but predominantly it falls into either a control centric variant which focuses on making use of the toolbox aspect of the monsters or uses a combo deck which focuses on turboing out as many bodies as possible and playing out from there depending on the type of build that is being used. So the answer is it's pretty diverse and how it's played is well pretty much up to you. All of the main deck BA monsters are level 3 Dark Fiend type monsters with the exception of Malakoda which is a level 6 Ritual monster but nobody uses Malakoda because well it's fucking terrible although it does come in Ghost Rare so there's that I suppose. The main deck Burning Abyss monsters share some common factors in their effects too. All of them are destroyed if there's a non-Burning Abyss monster on the field. They all have the ability to be special summoned from the hand if you don't control any spells and traps. And each one has a unique effect that can be activated when it's sent to the grave with the exception of Rubik which is a tuner instead. It's important to note that the last two parts of this are limited to once per turn. So if you decide to special summon one from your hand it can't then gain its effect. And given that they are hard once per turn it means that you can't set off multiple of the same Burn and Abyss monster in one turn. Burn and Abyss will often go down lines of play that allow you to go into Cherubini and or Dante, use the Dante loot with Seer and move into Beatrice to add option to disruption during the opponent's turn. So next up we're going to do a quick rundown of the Burning Abyss cards themselves, what they do and afterwards we'll take a look at some honorary Burning Abyss cards too as well as common extenders for the deck. First we'll look at the BA's unique effects for when they're sent to the grave. So it's off with Alec who targets a monster on the field and negates its effects. We have Barbar, which targets and banishes up to three Burning Abyss monsters from the grave, except itself, and then burns the opponent for 300 for each. We have Kagna, which sends a BA spell or trap from the deck to the grave. Kalkab, which targets and returns a set spell or trap from the field to the hand. Seer, which special summons a targeted BA monster from the grave, except itself. Dragig, 
which places a BA card from the deck onto the top of the deck. Farfa, which targets and banishes a monster on the field until the end phase. Graf, which special summons another Burning Abyss monster from the deck except itself. Libic, which summons a level 3 Dark Fiend from the hand and its effects are negated, which can come up quite often actually. Rubik, which is a tuner and therefore doesn't seem to get any nice additional effects. Skarm, which searches for a level 3 Dark Fiend during the end phase except itself, if you remember to activate its effect. There's also Malakoda, which I'll briefly cover for you, but nobody plays this fucking card. Um, but it sends one Burning Abyss monster from your hand to the graveyard to decrease the attack and defense of an opponent's monster by that sent monsters. If it's sent from the field to the graveyard, it sends one card on the field to the graveyard. That's the ritual monster, which again, nobody plays. Primarily though, people only tend to use Graf, Seer, Farfa, Skarm, Libic, Alec, and Barbar from the above, although Rubik may see some more experimentation going forward with Christron Halkafibrax or Needle Fiber in the picture. Most builds now favor a smaller engine, usually as little as a single copy of Graf and Seer, which are both limited to one at this time, and a single copy of Libic, as well as a significant number of extenders, much to the dismay of purists. Next, we're going to take a quick look at the extra deck monsters. So we'll start off with Beatrice. This one is limited to one, so unfortunately you don't get to play multiple of these, although that would be nice. So Beatrice is made with two level six monsters. You can also exceed summon it by sending one Burning Abyss monster from your hand to the graveyard and then using one Dante monster you control as the Xyz material. And any Xyz material attached to that monster also become attached to Beatrice. If she's summoned that way, you can't use her effects that turn, uh, but... That's not normally a problem anyway, because usually you're going to want her to disrupt your opponent. Once you turn, you're in either player's turn, so it's now a quick effect. Uh, you can detach one Xyz material monster from that card and send one card from your deck to the graveyard. That's any card, which is really, really insane. Uh, if it's in your possession and it's destroyed by an opponent's card by battle or card effect and sent to the graveyard, you can special summon one Burning Abyss monster from your extra deck, ignoring its summoning conditions. Quite often that will lead you to go into one of your other Dantes, um, although quite a lot of people don't rely on that effect anymore because people will normally try to find a way to get rid of her without triggering that effect. Next up, we'll take a look at Cherubini. Uh, so this is the Link monster that came out, I believe, last year. It was pretty recently. Uh, so it's two level three monsters to make this. Uh, monsters it points to can't be destroyed by card effects, which is really, really helpful, of course, because your BAs just blow themselves up. Uh, quite a lot of the time, anyway. If this card is on the field will be destroyed by a battle or by an opponent's card effect, you can send one other card you control to the graveyard instead, which is, again, really, really nice. You can send one level 3 monster from your deck to the graveyard, then target one Burning Abyss monster on the field. It gains attack and defense equal to the sent monster's attack and defense until the end of this turn. You can only use this effect of Cherubini once per turn. So it does just load up and start sending anything you need to the grave, trigger whatever effects you need to, and play out from there. Next up, we're going to look at the Grape Dante, the big purple boy that usually is fetched out by Beatrice, although there is a legitimate way to summon this, although I don't think I've ever seen it happen in my entire time playing this game. So we'll just go on as, uh, as if it's just something you special summon out the extra deck for free. So it's made with three Burning Abyss monsters with different names in case you care. Uh, it must be Fusion Summon and cannot be special summoned by other ways, except for by Beatrice. Uh, it can't be targeted by an opponent's card effects, once per turn during the player's turn, so that's a quick effect. You can send one Burning Abyss monster from your hand to the graveyard and then draw one card, which obviously triggers those Burning Abyss cards as well. If it's destroyed by a battle and sent to the graveyard, or if this card you control is sent to your graveyard by an opponent's card effect, you can send one random card from your opponent's hand to the graveyard. People don't like losing cards out of their hands, so of course, they don't like this. It also digs you deeper, and it gets a trigger off your Burning Abyss monsters that you're pitching from your hand, which is really, really nice. Next, we're going to look at Daddy Dante, the Xyz version of Dante, uh, Traveler of the Burning Abyss. Uh, so once per turn, you can detach one material from this card and choose a number from one to three, and then send that many cards from the top of your deck to the graveyard. It is worth noting that this is a cost. So when people show you Ash Blossom thinking they're really fucking smart, you get to laugh at them because now they've just given you some free information and they've made a misplay. Uh, so until the end of the turn, it gains 500 attack for each card sent to the graveyard, so it becomes a little bit of a beat stick, not huge. If it attacks, it's changed to defense position, which is really nice. Um, and then if it's sent to the graveyard, you can target one Burning Abyss in your graveyard and add it 
to your hand, except for itself, of course. Uh, and that comes up later on, which we'll discuss in a bit more detail further down the line. Next up, you've got Virgil, Guitar Hero of the Burning Abyss, one tuna and one more non-tuna monsters. This is kind of like a shitty in archetype Brianak, but it does have the benefit of being able to be tutored out in different ways, that kind of thing. But you'll see that synergy when you start playing the deck. Uh, so you can only control one Virgil, Rockstar of the Burning Abyss. Once per turn, you can discard one Burning Abyss card, then target one card your opponent controls, or in their graveyard and shuffle it into the deck. Worth noting that that isn't a quick effect, so you can only do it during your own. Uh, if it's on the field and it's destroyed by battle or card effect and sent to the graveyard, you can draw one card. You can only use this effect of Virgil, Rockstar of the Burning Abyss, once per turn. Most commonly, decks will run a couple of copies of the Dante Xyz, a single copy of Beatrice, which is limited to one, and a single copy of Cherubini. Some enjoy running Purple Dante as a target for Beatrice, but people will usually avoid killing her until they can safely remove her from the board without triggering the effect, so this is usually wasted extra deck slot. As a note for Virgil, it is quite nice that you can bring it back and loop it in with some of the other cards, but a lot more people would probably opt to go for Brio, given that you can, well, just do a lot more and it's just as easy to summon. Next up, we're going to quickly cover the spells and traps for Burning Abyss, although largely these don't really see much play these days. There are occasions where people like to play with them for a bit of fun. Uh, so firstly, we'll cover Fire Lake of the Burning Abyss, probably the one that does see the most play when these do see play. Uh, so you can send two face up Burning Abyss monsters you control to the graveyard, then target up to three cards in the field and destroy those targets. This is really, really nice because, of course, you can interrupt your opponent given that it is a trap. Uh, you can send two Burning Abysses, triggering their effects, and then, of course, you're going to get to pop cards on the field, which is really nice. Uh, just, yeah, one of the actual kind of useful traps that are available to this deck uh, that are in Archetype, at least. Next up, we've got Good and Evil in the Burning Abyss, which is a ritual spell for Malakoda. During your main phase, except the turn this card was sent to the graveyard, you can banish this card from your graveyard and send one Burning Abyss monster from your hand to the graveyard, Add one Burning Abyss card from your deck to your hand. And you can only use that effect once per turn. Again, it doesn't really see any play. Next up, we're looking at the Terminus of the Burning Abyss. So during your main phase, except the turn this card was sent to the graveyard, you can banish this card from your graveyard, then target one Burning Abyss monster on the field, and it gains 800 attack and defense until the end of your opponent's next turn. It's worth noting that this is the fusion card for the deck, but again, nobody really summons Dante with its fusion effects, or even really plays this card in general. Finally, we've got the Traveler in the Burning Abyss, another trap card, which allows you to target any number of Burning Abyss monsters in your graveyard that was sent there this turn, and special summon them in defense position. You can only activate one the Traveler of the Burning Abyss per turn. So this is basically an in archetype, slower, not quite as good soul charge. Again, it doesn't really see much play, but there we are. Burn Abyss spell and traps rarely see play in the modern game. Very occasionally, people will experiment with the novelty of using Fire Lake, but the usage beyond that is rare. So quickly, I just wanted to mention some honorary Burning Abyss cards. These are two that you will see almost in any iteration of a Burning Abyss deck in some variant. So firstly, I wanted to talk about Phoenix Rhino Warrior. Uh, so Fiend Monsters you control, except Phoenix Rhino Warrior, cannot be destroyed by battle or card effects whilst it's on the field. If it's sent to the graveyard, you can send one Fiend-type monster from your deck to the grave, except Phoenix Rhino Warrior. You can only use this effect of Phoenix Rhino Warrior once per turn. So what it's worth noting here is that by having this on the field, you stop your Burning Abyss monsters blowing themselves up when you gain access to other extenders. But also, in itself, when it goes to Grave, it will allow you to access whichever ones you need from the deck, as well as other Fiend-type monsters you may be running in the deck as a whole. Uh, and yeah, it just comes up quite a lot, so it's one of those cards that you will almost always see, to some degree, in those decks. Next up, we of course have to mention Torgard from the Underworld, recently brought back to two. Uh, you'll normally see that maxed out. People would run three if possible because it is the best normal summon in your deck. Uh, so when it is normal summon, you can special summon one level three Fiend Monster from your hand or deck, but negate its effect and also it cannot be used as Synchro Material. Largely being used as Synchro Material doesn't really matter, uh, but Tour Guide is a really, really important extender. It immediately gets you into a Cherubini or gets you through your main engine's line of plays. Most variants will use two copies of Tour Guide, which is, of course, the best normal summon in the deck. 
Uh, and Phoenix Rhino Warrior gets used anywhere between one and three copies, depending on the variant. As a common line of play that involves in particular these two, and we will cover this just so it gives you an opportunity to practice this yourself at home if you have the cards and you want to know how to use it. So generally speaking, your normal summon of Tour Guide will fetch you Rhino from the deck. Um, you can then send both to the graveyard for Cherubini, or you can turn them into Dante if you'd prefer to mill. You then detach Rhino, or of course, by the fact that it's gone to the grave in making Cherubini, you'd then be able to activate its effect in either scenario, which would send Graf from your deck, and then you would use Graf to summon Seer from the deck, and then you either therefore, at the end of this, have Cherubini with a Seer on the field, or a Seer and Dante on the field together. After this, when Seer and Dante ever go to the grave, you can use Dante to add Seer back to hand. And when Seer goes to the grave, you can special summon Dante, which, once again, when it goes to the grave, will add back Seer. And, well, as you can see, this just keeps you having more or less an infinite resource and a continuous line of play. That is the most basic line of play that you will see used in Burning Abyss to get your kind of engine going. That is what you always want to see in your opening turn. And then you can build on that depending on what extenders you have available to you. On the note of common extenders uh, and things that you often see paired with this deck as a whole, just a quick rundown of ones that you will often see at this moment in time at least. Of course though, this will change over time depending on the format. So usually you're going to see the likes of Speedroid Terratop and Takatomborg. Uh, I really, really enjoy these, just three bodies on the board. Edge Imp Sabres is pretty much a staple in almost every single Burning Abyss variant I ever see now. Uh, Psychic Wielder and Tracker see a lot of play, especially given that the Earth, they do see a lot more play in the uh, the, the rock type variants of these or the block dragon builds. Um, we've Gallus the Star Beast, which again used to see even more play when we were playing Sekka variants. But of course, milling that spell or trap is a little bit more dangerous now. Um, it does also, again, continue to see play in a lot of block builds because it is an Earth type. You've got Mathematician, again, for the reasons of the previous two. It's, uh, it's an Earth type monster, so it sees play in that. But also, it's effectively an Armageddon Knight for your deck uh, and usually gets your plays going. You've got Phantom Knight at Boots and Cloak, and of course, the, uh, the complementary trap cards for if you want to play a PK Fire variant. You've got the likes of the Dangers, predominantly the level 3s, although those are now at 1 each. Uh, you would normally see a small engine, but you get some people who like to maximise on those, just to turbo through their decks, see as many extenders as possible, and usually go on to obliterate boards. We often see Sea Archiver see in play now as well. Again, it's just a free body on board, it's also level 3, so of course it ties in with that synergy with the rest of the deck. We also see a lot of uh, synergy with the likes of Orcust seeing play in particular of recent formats, although much less so now. And the Predator Plants now going into Master Rule 5 give you access to a lot more fusion cards. And of course, you can abuse those in every way you like. So just a quick note before we go on variants of Burning Abyss that mostly see play now. Uh, of course, this changes over time, so be aware that this is a time-sensitive topic in this particular part. So Block Dragon BA, this is probably the most common version that's being used now, but it revolves around using Block Dragon and tons of other Earth Extenders to be explosive, break boards, or build strong going first boards too. We also have PK Fire, which is an older variant that sees occasional play using the Phantom Knight cards and a more trap-heavy variant to control the board. In recent formats, we did see Orca seeing a lot of play with Burning Abyss because there was quite a bit of synergy there, actually, although it's seeing much less play at the moment, but it does have good synergy with the deck overall. And finally, of note, we've got Danger Burning Abyss, which is just a heavy focus on using the Dangers as extenders to quickly build advantage and strengthen the board presence, which is great for going first or second. So that is it for the video guys, hopefully this has helped you on your journey to learn a little bit more about the Burning Abyss and what it is that makes this deck so popular. Hopefully this is going to help you with your plays and the like going forward or maybe even just playing against the deck as a whole or maybe you just got a bit of an interest in this cult classic deck in the game that doesn't seem to go away. Thank you very much for checking in guys, if you haven't already please hit subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you for watching. Hopefully you've enjoyed the garbage content I've put together for you. Enough to hit subscribe and maybe even drop a thumbs up and a comment. Before you go, be sure to check out the links in the description to help support the people who are making this channel a possibility. Thanks again for checking in and I'll see you in the next one.